Hello. Ah. Ah. That's it. That is it. Ah, oh, the quality of Apple. I must say that I'm actually delighted to see it. It's much more of a dark gray than the Matthias. Has a more premium feel to it, although the keys are not nearly as, well, tactile, if I could say the word. There's not as much key travel on these keys as there is with the original Apple extended wired keyboard. But, I would say, they're far better than what you find on the MacBook or the MacBook Pro in that you can actually press down at least a little bit. Included, as typical for Apple, is a, a sparse few paper documents, as tiny as they could possibly make them, and of course your charging cable, which you don't really need most of the time since this is a wireless keyboard. But I will need to charge it, no doubt, uh, before formally using it. You can perhaps see why I appreciate the color so much. It almost perfectly matches the very dark gray color of my Japanese-made Eizo 27-inch display. Anyway, the lightning connector is back here. I'll go ahead and plug it in so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, this over here, this little strip is for the antenna, and here is the power switch in its off state. And if we flip it on, We see a green color. And here is the lightning connector. And here is the antenna strip. The only important thing I really see in this manual is that you need OS 10.12.4 or later. Of course, what all of you really want to know is, what is it like to type on? Because this is, after all, a keyboard and quite frankly, the other things don't matter that much. So let's take a look. I would say that um, key travel is a little bit lacking. It's even less than the Matthias keyboard. But it's not as bad as the MacBooks. Now, if you like the MacBooks, you probably are offended by that, but I don't care. It's what, I'm, what I think that matters because I'm reviewing this. I would say it, it has it has a fairly good feel to it. Uh, the keys are stable, so you've got improved stability, key stability, and that's something you didn't have on the Matthias. Um, and more key stability than you had on earlier Mac keyboards, like the wired extended keyboard. So in that regard, the keys are very stable, but you don't get much key travel. And um, maybe that is good, or maybe that is bad. It's up to you. And that's why if you can go to an Apple store, go to an Apple store <laughs> to try it out. So you can feel it for yourself. I would say it feels somewhat okay to me, but I am very particular about my keyboards. Remember, I used keyboards since uh, the 1980s, so I'm used to a lot of key travel. And this, if you're used to that, you're not gonna get that with this keyboard. But after using the Matthias for so long, I really do appreciate uh, the key stability that comes with this keyboard. To do caps lock, as I just typed, you have to do shift in caps lock, and then it will stay on. Of course, this keyboard has the little nubs that are on the F, the J, and the numeric keypad 5 key, so that without looking at the keyboard, you can feel your way around the keys. 
some of the keys, because I'm using an external display like the brightness keys, they're not going to have a function. If I use my, my uh, volume keys, that doesn't have a function if you have an external display hooked up to uh, through HDMI or through uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, you can buy some software that will actually remedy that, but just to let you know, there are certain keys at the top that don't automatically come on, although this is very much a Mac keyboard. Again, Apple makes it. So overall, I would say that um, I'm fairly happy with it. The top row of keys up here are nice and big, and they're easier to hit than the Matthias keyboard. And again, the color, even though this is a keyboard and things like that don't matter, matches up with the set I have. So I'm, uh, for the most part, very pleased. What I will say, though, is that this keyboard does not come up very much in the back. And that may be obnoxious to some of you who are used to the keyboard coming up about this much, especially on older key Apple keyboards. I mean, it's nice that it's tapered and very low here, so your, your, your hands are not going to be, you know, up higher, but... It just, it, I wish they had made it a little bit taller in the back. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it's something that you should take note of. It looks to me to be only about a centimeter tall in the back, which isn't very much at all. So why did I relegate this Matthias keyboard to the recycle bin? Well, as you can see, the S key is totally gone. The A key is pretty much gone. The N key is almost gone as well. By the way, the A and the S keys, these are actually the replacements that Matthias sent me because three months after I purchased this, the lettering came off. You know, and I'm not using this keyboard hard either. Uh, but the worst problem is now in 2019, I bought this in 2017, the Bluetooth connectivity is just crazy. It loses connectivity all the time. It's basically become unusable. And no, I haven't dropped it. I haven't dropped it. I have, I've treated it very nice. So if you want to see my original review from 2017, uh, check out the link I'm going to post for you. You can see that. Just buyer beware. I strongly advise you to get another keyboard. I'm not trying to trash Matthias by saying this, but their keyboard really is garbage, <laughs> at least compared to this. And even if you don't compare it to another keyboard, it is garbage if it stops working, if it loses its Bluetooth connectivity. And I don't really care what the reason is. I had problems from the get-go. I had to, um, well, you can see my other video review of it from, from a couple years ago, but uh, it has given me problems until now. So I have much more confidence in Apple's keyboard. I didn't like the price, you know, about $150, honestly. It's sticking it not to the man, I guess, as the man being the 1% is what they would say, right? It's sticking it to us, the consumer, but it's it's a better quality product. Now, if you don't like low, keyboard, low key travel at all, then you're not gonna really like this keyboard. It's better than the MacBooks. If you've ever typed on those and you just said, oh my gosh, this is just horrible. It's better than that but it's not a lot better. And if you're used to the white Apple extended keyboard with the numeric keypad, which has the wire on it, it's not the wireless, but the wired version, I had that, that came with my 2009 um, iMac 27 inch. I would say that is probably my favorite Mac chiclet keyboard. In other words, the keys that are fairly low profile because the key ch travel on that is about twice as uh, what this is. So if you're not that sensitive to key travel, this is definitely for you. If you're sort of sensitive and you're not sure, my video is not going to help you necessarily determine that. You're going to need to go to an Apple store and actually type on one, but I would say it's marginally better than a MacBook Pro. And it just might be good enough because I hate the MacBook Pro keyboards. They're just horrible. The low travel keyboard, no. No thank you. No thank you. And that's why I would never, I'm never going to buy a MacBook Pro again so long as they use those butterfly keyboards. Let's just say that. And so that's the type of person I am. And so for me to say, this keyboard is bearable, that probably means a lot to you, right? If you're kind of of the same mindset than me. So uh, yeah, what I wrote here, or typed with my keyboard is true. The keyboard itself, it's, I mean, it makes a little bit of noise. It's not, it's not like you're, your um, cherry key switches or your cherry blues, cherry reds and all that, it doesn't really make a lot of noise. But um, 
you can get a little bit of audible feedback and if that's important to you well this is a good keyboard for you and really what I'm looking forward to is longevity I don't um, I feel that the lettering hopefully is going to last longer I will update this video in the description below to keep you informed but um, if these letters start coming off believe me after the price I paid for this uh, Apple will know my wrath <laughs> But I have more confidence in Apple than I do in Matthias. And honestly, when I broke out the Matthias uh, for the first time, and just fe the feel of the keys, it just they felt cheap. And even to this day, they're wobbly. It's all heck and annoying. Oh, it even annoys me even now to type on them. And this one, it's a little bit less key travel than the Matthias, but they're so stable. And it just overall makes me feel better. The keyboard would have been perfect if it had a bit more key travel, but this is about the closest thing you're going to get to perfection. And for me, uh, I love the color. The color is great. The color matches what I have, and I like the darker color of the keyboard. So this, you know, doesn't cover everything, uh, all the details between the Matthias and the Apple, because I don't think it's necessary. The Matthias has a year of battery life. This Apple, unfortunately, only has a month. That's a gripe. You could say, Apple, we're paying more. Why don't you give us better, better battery life? You know, I can say little things like that, but that, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter a whole lot. It doesn't matter a whole lot. I got to charge up my Apple mouse once a month anyway with a lightning cable, so I might as well deal with the keyboard as well. It's not a deal breaker. When you buy a keyboard, you want to have a good typing experience. You want to make sure your lettering doesn't come off. Even if you can type without looking at the keyboard, it just looks aesthetically horrible, right? So uh, buying this Apple keyboard should... Um, well, give you what you paid for. <laughs> At least that's my hope. So again, I'll update this video over time and let you know how it goes. But uh, for now, I can definitely recommend this Apple Extended Wireless Keyboard in Space Gray. Thanks for watching.